Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeremy Walsh, and I'm the Director of Support, Training, and Documentation for BNI Connect. I'd like to welcome everybody to the webinar today. Today's webinar is on the chapter website. Um, it's going to be an introductory level uh, course showing you how the chapter websites work, where they can be seen, and how you can go in and edit those chapter websites to do some pretty interesting things with them. Before we get started, a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, this is a live webinar, so if you have any questions as we're going along, please do feel free to ask those questions. The best way to do that is by typing the question into the GoToWebinar software. I'll see that question pop up on my screen, and I'll be able to answer it as we're going through the material today. Today's webinar is scheduled for about 30 minutes of content. So we're going to go through all of the functionality, and then what I'll do is I'll open it up for uh, more free-form questions. Although the content is scheduled for 30 minutes, I'm always happy to stay on the call as long as people have questions. Um, it is all being recorded, so even if you do have to leave early, uh, you can go back and review the recording later. There'll be two places that you'll be able to find the recording, the first of which is on our support site. If you're in BNI Connect, click on this question mark in the upper right-hand corner. That will take you over to our support site, which is support.bniconnect.com. And you'll see in chapter training and documentation, the recorded webinars. And you can see we've already posted our July recorded webinars. You'll be able to go in here, review any of the webinars, and the maintaining your chapter website one will show up as soon as we're done with this one today. You'll also be able to find them on our YouTube channel. So if you go to youtube.com forward slash BNI Connect Global, we have a ton of recorded content up here, some special messages from Dr. Meisner, some educational moments, some uh, recorded webinars, and tons of other things up there as well. So please do check us out at youtube.com as well. All right, so let's talk about some chapter websites and the, the webmaster position in BNI Connect. So if you're unfamiliar, Every single chapter in BNI um, has a chapter website associated with BNI Connect. So all 6,300 or so chapters, everybody's got a chapter website. Now, by default, it will come out of the box, so to speak, with a bunch of information in it. Let me show you what that looks like. All of the chapter websites are associated with the region websites. So. If your region has a website out there, you, all you need to do is go to that regional website. So for example, I'm going to go to AntarcticReferrals.com. This is our test region up in Antarctica. You can go to Find a Chapter and look for the chapters. And let's take a look at the BNI Burr chapter up there. This is the chapter details page, but then there's also a chapter website. And if I go to this chapter website, this is what a chapter website looks when nothing at all has been done to it. So right out of the box, so to speak. Now, there are some really good things about the chapter website, even if you haven't gone in and done edit, any editing to it whatsoever. The first of which is that on the left-hand side, at the very least, you'll see all of the information about your chapter. So there is a link to visit the chapter. It lets people know what day of the week you meet, where you meet, um, how to get in touch with somebody at the chapter, the email, the, the member count, the vice president, the chapter director consultant, the area director, all of that is updated automatically. So as the leadership teams in your chapter change and as members of your chapter change, this will all be updated automatically. It will also automatically update the amount of closed business out of your um, POMS report. All of your chapter members will also be automatically listed. So as people join the chapter and as people leave the chapter, this roster is automatically updated. And for anybody that's ever before BNI Connect, lots and lots and lots of chapters maintained their own chapter website. So they would go out, they would buy a domain name, and usually the webmaster of the chapter would go, uh, maybe the web designer that was holding the web design seat, they would go and they'd create a chapter website. The problem is it's a lot of maintenance and upkeep. The majority of the maintenance and upkeep is done by BNI Connect automatically. Member profiles, as people update their member profiles in BNI Connect, they'll also 
roll automatically into the chapter website. So again, it's one less thing for chapter webmasters to worry about. Now again, this is a default site. Let me show you a couple of sites that have some stuff done with them. So here's a really, really good example of, well, let, me, let me do a search here. There, I know there's a chapter called the BNI Mill River chapter. And you can see that they are Google indexed. And if I go to their Mill River chapter, here's a couple of things that they've done with their chapter website. So they changed the text around in here. They put a link to the search. They put their Twitter account on here. They put a uh, Facebook link to go to their Facebook page on here. You can see that if, this, if the um, chapter, your secretary treasurer is entering the speakers, those will be automatically updated on the site as well in the footer. And they put a chapter map here. They also have been using a chapter news page. So that's one example. Another example here is a chapter in San Francisco. And they've really gone all out to really do some interesting things with their page. So you can see they've put a whole column based format in here. There, all of their chapter speakers are listed because their secretary treasurers are putting them in. They have the interactive map. They have a special message from their chapter president. They have a link to visit their chapter. Now here's the really cool thing that they did with theirs is they went to the ch chapter members and you can see they do have all their chapters listed here which is the default but they also put in a function where they can view the chapter by power teams. Now again this took a little bit of programming work but they were able to really customize this page in a way that allowed them to make this chapter website their own. Uh, we have a question from Daniel. He says, one of our members has asked if there is a way to keep their member profile private. And absolutely, there is a way to keep your member profile private. Let me show you that real quick. If you log into BNI Connect, the member needs to do this themselves. So tell the member to log into BNI Connect and then click on the link that says Update My Profile. They're then going to go over to the contact details page and right here you'll see show me on BNI public website. So if they uncheck this box they will no longer be seen on the public website. It will keep their profile private on the regional and chapter websites. So does that answer your question Daniel? All right, excellent. So. Again, these are just some examples of some chapter websites and what you can do with them. So how do we edit the chapter websites in BNI Connect? Let me close out of these. In order to manage your chapter website, you do need to be listed as the chapter webmaster or on the leadership team. So usually by default, the president, the vice president, the secretary treasurer will automatically have access to this function. But also, there is a special position in BNI Connect called the Chapter Webmaster. So you can check to see if you have this position or not by clicking on the Profile button down here at the bottom. And when you do that, you'll see all of your roles listed here. If Chapter Webmaster is one of those roles, then you'll be able to do this. If not, please get in touch with your director consultant or with your regional office or your executive director, and they will be able to assign that position to you. Once you get assigned the position, what you'll see is this Tools menu. Under Tools, you'll see CMS, and then you'll see Chapter Websites. So if I click on Tools, CMS, Chapter Websites, this will take me into the CMS editor. And for those of you uh, that might not be familiar, CMS stands for Content Management System. Once you get in there, you'll see all of the chapter websites that you have access to. If you're a chapter webmaster for one chapter, more than likely you'll just see one thing listed here. There is the possibility that you can work with multiple chapter websites um, if that's something that your regional office is interested in doing. Once you get here, you'll see the chapter website and you want to click on the options link on the right hand side. 
Now once we get there, we'll see the page layout. And this is the kind of the, the structure of your chapter web page. Give you a quick tour of how this is laid out. So this first one is all of the pages. So you can see we have a home page, we have a chapter members page, we have the three sub pages or subsections of the chapter members page. There's a gallery page and a news page. Right now, those are we are limited to those pages on your chapter site. So we can't add any pages at this time. Uh, it's just going to be those set of pages. At the bottom of the page, you'll see two links. There's the preview URL and the live URL. When you're working on a chapter website, when you're making your changes, you're working on a back-end copy so that you can be free to experiment, play around, make changes, and the general public won't see those changes. They'll only be able to see the live site. When you're ready, you can then publish your website, and that will take whatever you're working on in the background, the preview URL, and it will overwrite the live one. Now we have a question from Daniel. He says, where is the CMS? on BNI Connect so we can modify the code to do similar things as the San Francisco site. So the San Francisco site, that we, we're in the CMS editor now, so you would go to Tools, CMS, Chapter, Websites. Or are you asking about the source code? So I'll show you how to get to the source code. Um, the source code for San Francisco, that's something that they developed themselves. But if you go to their chapter website, maybe you can get in touch with their webmaster for that particular chapter website, and they would be willing to share it with you. All right, so here's, this is the page layout. There's also a couple of other tabs that you'll see up here. The library tab is where all of the... Um, pictures are stored for your website. So in order to put a picture up on your chapter page, you do need to get the picture up into the BNI Connect servers. And you do that by putting things into your site library. It's really easy to do. We just have to go to the library. We go to Images and click Upload. This will open up a tool. You then click on the magnifying glass. This will search your computer for various files. So let's say I wanted to upload a couple of pictures here. I want to get a BNI logo up there. I'm going to put this traffic light up there, and I want to bring this uh, get connected, stay connected. So you can choose, I believe, up to three files at a time. I'm going to upload those. And now we have these pictures up in my library waiting to be used on my chapter page. You can delete files by putting a check mark in the box and choosing delete. You can also upload documents and flash files as well. The next tab is Site Information. Now the Site Information tab is, again, a little bit more of the back-end settings. The most important thing on here that you would like to pay attention to is this chapter folder name. And the chapter folder name is really the, the link to your website. By default, because these are automatically generated for you, it's going to give your chapter folder name based on the name of the region that you're in in BNI, and then the name of your chapter with dashes where there were any spaces or special characters. But that can be kind of a, a bear to try to tell people to go to when you want to direct them to your chapter website. So. If I wanted people to go to the Burr chapter website, I'd have to tell them, okay, go to antarcticreferrals.com forward slash shiver dash region dash BNI dash 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 Burr dash chapter. That is a mouthful. So you can edit this so that it is whatever you'd like it to be as long as it's unique within your region. So I can make this just be antarcticreferrals.com forward slash Burr or Burr chapter if I'd like to. And that's a little bit easier to tell people. If you have a website domain that you've already purchased or that your region has, that can also be pointed to the chapter folder name using an A record. 
The rest of the information I wouldn't recommend changing unless you first talk to your regional office. If you are using something like Google Analytics, you can put the code down here. If you make any changes, make sure you click Update. And this will take us back to the pages. Now, because I changed the name, I'm going to go ahead and publish the site to make sure that these links are active. All right, so when it comes to the pages themselves, a couple of things I want to point out here. Um, for the main pages, you can edit the name. And you'll notice that these correlate to the different buttons along the top. So we have the home, the chapter members, and the news. So these can be changed. So if I wanted to change this from home, and let's say I wanted to change this to our chapter, I can do that. And now if I go back to the preview site, you'll see that it went from home to our chapter. You can also adjust the meta tags for better searchability. And then edit content is where we'll go in in just a second to actually edit the content of the page. You can do the same with the other pages. I do want to point out a couple of um, special things about the two pages at the bottom. You'll notice that there's a gallery page and a news page. So the news page is a special page that allows you to put chapter news up. Um, this actually pulls from the regular portion of BNI Connect that allows your chapter members to participate in putting announcements up on your page. So the way it looks like here, this is the, the news. And these are populated from your region. Or, again, if your chapter participates, they can upload news articles directly to the chapter website without having to have ch uh, chapter webmaster access. There's another page that's a special page, and that's the gallery page. And this allows your chapter to share pictures and events and photographs. By default, that page is hidden. So with these two pages, you can choose whether or not you would like to display them or hide them. And you'll see here that my option on the gallery is to show it, and my option on news is to hide it. If I'd like to show the gallery and start using it, I would click Show and Submit. And a couple of things will happen when I do that. The first of which is you'll notice that there's a new tab here. This is a special library of photographs that allows us to create a picture gallery. So I can do things like add an album. Click Submit. And I can add pictures into these albums. Uh, let's see what we got here. And click Upload. And now if I go back and refresh here, my preview site, you'll see now that I have gallery. And I can go into this album and review the pictures. And again, this is how the Mill River chapter kind of created a blog on their website. All right, we have a question here from Terry. She says, I understand the pictures and wanting them on my page, but how do I have the ability to show them to fellow members? So, Terry, I think you're talking about your personal profile. Is that correct? All right, so if you don't mind, I'm going to get back to that one after uh, we go through this because it's in a different section of, the, of BNI Connect. Okay? All right, so... Let's go in and take a look at how do we actually edit a chapter website. So you'll see you have an edit content on each one of these pages. I'm going to go in and edit the content for the Our Chapter page. So 
So what we can see here is the website editor. Now you'll notice that there's some things that we cannot change on the page, and that's the stuff that's pulled automatically from BNI Connect. So the whole left-hand side menu, again, that's pulled directly from BNI Connect, so we, we are not able to edit that information here. And the same thing with the chapter speakers at the bottom. That's information that's pulled directly from the speaker rotation that your secretary treasurer is entering into BNI Connect. It's really this information in the middle of the page and on some of the other pages, the headers and the footers that we're going to be editing. Within here, you can you kind of have free reign to, to do to get as creative as you'd like to get. Let's go through with some of these buttons, and I think this is going to bring us back to one of the earlier questions here. Um, you can get the source code for the pages by clicking the source button on that page. So if I click source, you'll see this go over into HTML code. And again, if you wanted to talk to that San Francisco page, they might be able to share this source code with you, and you can then put it into your chapter website and be able to then make edits to it and make it your own. By the way, this is also a great opportunity to make a backup of your site if you'd like to. So I can go in, I'm going to hit Control A on my keyboard and choose Copy. I'm going to open up Notepad here and choose Paste. And now I have a backup of my site, so after I mess it up, I mean, make it look all pretty in a few minutes, I can go back and revert it to its original state. Now you can work in this or you can work in another program and then copy and paste the source code in here or you can go back to the WYSIWYG editor. And here we are. Now most of the buttons on here you're probably familiar with if you've ever used a word editing software. So the top row is some typical things, undo and redo and cut, copy and paste. The next set of buttons I'm not going to get into today, but it's, it's for building forms. Uh, you do need to have some experience when you're, if you're going to build forms because it requires some back-end coding. The next row has to do with formatting, so you can do things here like superscript and subscript. You can bold, you can make things italic. Of course, you can underline things and do strikethroughs. You can have numbered lists and bulleted lists. This is for increasing the fonts and the indents here. And block quotes. You can justify things in different manners. And coming in from the right over here, you can change things like the font, although one note of warning about changing the font, Arial is the default and branded font for BNI. So whenever possible, please make sure that you are using the Arial font. Um, I understand there may be reasons to use other fonts, but um, BNI branding is pretty uh, insistent that we use the Arial font whenever possible. But of course we can change the size of things. We can change the color of things and the background colors as well. All right, the next set of buttons over here is where we get into a little bit more specialty web things. Uh, the first of these is a link button. Now the link button is if you want to bring somebody, for example, to another website. So let's say I want this word BNI here to bring people to the BNI page. I can do that by highlighting, clicking the link button, and then typing the website in that I'd like them to go to. Now whenever anybody clicks on the word BNI, it will take them over to www.bni.com. Now if you have a really long page, you can also put anchors on the page to bring people to the different parts of the page using a link. The next button is where if we want to start putting those gorgeous pictures that we uploaded into the library before. That's when we'd use this picture button. So let's say I want to add one of those pictures down here at the bottom. 
I'm going to go ahead and click the picture button. I'm going to click browse server to go look in my library. You'll see there are some stock photography pictures up there for you already, but you can also grab any of the pictures that you uploaded. Now that's going to be pretty huge, so I'm going to shrink that down a little bit, maybe to 250. And now I have a nice picture in there. One suggestion I have for people is that you can make tables. And a lot of people will use this to keep their pictures aligned. So you can actually go into the table and put a picture right into the table. And then another one on the other side. Oh, I left that one too big. So I can always go in and choose the image properties. And let me make this a little smaller. Now you can also link pictures. So if I want on this Get Connected link here, Anytime anybody clicks on that picture, I'd like them to take them to, let's say, the support site. I can do that by clicking the link button and making sure I type in support.bniconnect.com and click OK. So other things you can do on the page, you can embed videos, you can um, embed things like the Facebook links and things like that. For those types of things, you will need to sometimes get the source code from other places. So for example, let's say I wanted to put a YouTube video um, into this website. I can do that. So what I first need to do though is I need to go to YouTube and let's say I wanted to put this new educational moment up there for joining a group. I would grab this video, go to the share page and get the embed code. I'm copying and pasting that now we need to go into the source code. Now what I like to do is, let's say I want it in the middle of the page somewhere. What I'll sometimes do is put a marker in there. So I'm going to do XXXXXXX so I know where to put this. Then I can switch to the source code. I can look for this XXXXX and I'm going to paste that iframe code in there. Now we'll see a placeholder. I made some changes, so I'm going to click Save, which will bring me to a preview of what my new gorgeous page looks like. I can see my embedded video here. I can see the changes I made to the text. And I can see the pictures that I put up here as well. Now again, that's just the preview site. But what the rest of the world is seeing is the live site. Once I'm satisfied that the preview site is the way I want it to be, I'm going to go ahead and click the Publish button. Now that it's published, I can go back to my live site and it will show all of my wonderful, gorgeous changes. And those are the basics of updating your BNI Connect site. So we are just about at the bottom of the hour. For anybody that needs to leave right away, I know I still have a question from Terry here that we're going to go over in just a second. But for those of you that do need to leave right away at the bottom of the hour, thank you so much for being here. Again, it is being recorded, including any of the, any of the upcoming questions. You can find those on YouTube and also on the support site. I'd also love it if you gave us a like on Facebook. If you go to facebook.com forward slash BNI Connect Global, um, it would be great if you gave us a like up there. We do webinar announcements and tips and tricks and all sorts of stuff up here on our Facebook page. And finally, a good referral for me. Please go to the support site or your regional calendars and recommend for your fellow chapter members to attend some of these webinars. That would be a great referral for me. 
Um, we're starting our August ser series up next week, starting next Friday, with Building VCP, and we go through the whole series in the month of August. So I'd invite you to ask some questions now. So we have one question up here, and that's from Terry. She says, I understand the pictures and wanting to get them on my page, but how do I have the ability to show them to my family members, to my uh, fellow members? That's all done. So the way to upload pictures to your own profile, in case you don't know how to do that, you do that by going to Network Picture Gallery. So Network Picture Gallery. This will allow you to upload photos. There is a maximum of 20 photos per profile. Now, if you want people to see those, the place that people see those is on your profile when they find you. So either by searching for somebody in BNI Connect. So if I searched for myself here, you would see my profile and my photos page. And that's where people would see your photos. And they could see a little picture show of the photos that you have up there. One good use that I've seen for this, by the way, is to put testimonials in there from clients. So clients obviously don't have access necessarily to BNI Connect unless they are another BNI member. So it's really hard to get testimonials from clients in a place that people can see them. Well, if you can take that testimonial and either scan it into your computer or somehow otherwise save it as some type of a picture file, like a PNG file or a JPEG file, you can go in and put that in there and share a testimonial through your photo gallery. Does that answer your question, Terry? All right. That was the only question that I have. Does anybody else have any questions whatsoever, either on chapter websites or on anything else in BNI Connect? And Mr. Seltzer, thank you so much for the tag on Facebook. I appreciate that. Look forward to seeing you in November, I hope. All right. Well, if there's no additional questions, like to thank everybody so much for oh hold on a second Terry says Terry says wait wait hold on hold on uh, let's see go ahead you can finish typing out your uh, question I'll wait for you Terry All right, she says, uh, I have a customer who is very happy with our work. She put a testimonial on the Briggs and Straighten website. Can I copy that testimonial and put it on my BNI page? Um, first of all, what I would do is to whoever runs that Briggs and Straighten website, I would get their permission first um, before you do anything. And then, you know, there's a number of ways you can copy that and put it into your profile onto your BNI page. Um, you know, by just taking some type of a graphic picture of it, like a screenshot of it, that would be one way, or making a document out of it and uploading it. Uh, let's see, Luke, so you want to copy the, the web address of the site also? I don't see why you couldn't do that, but again, I would definitely check with the website owner and the person that wrote the testimonial and get permission first before you do that. Uh, Luke says, any BNI Connect webinars coming up on connecting chapter referrals? So um, on how to input chapter referrals, how the, how the whole online system works, and absolutely yes there is, if that is your uh, question there, Luke. Again, go to the support site. These will be up on your regional calendars soon. But on the August 11th, which is the following Monday, Monday, August 11th, 
at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, we will be going through the entire online slips program in BNI Connect. So how do online slips work, how to enter them, how to review them, how to see the referrals that you've received online in BNI Connect. So please do. I would love to see you and your chapter members uh, on that webinar. So please spread the word if you can. You can register ahead of time by clicking on that link. And if you can't make that one, there's definitely recordings. Just click on one of the months of recordings, and we had one for on July 18th that you can review the recording there as well. All right, any other questions? Questions, questions. All right, everyone. I will uh, thank you again for being here today. Really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you on a future webinar. Have a great week, everyone, and happy connecting.